and welcome to DomainVestors.tv. I'm your host, Morgan Linton, and today is Sunday, July 12th, 2009. But you're watching this on Monday, July 13th, 2009. So why on Monday? Why the change? Well, my thought is that most people take Sunday off and they spend the day with their families, they spend the day with their friends, they aren't online, they aren't checking email, and they probably aren't watching news about domain investing. Well, I have had a lot of people watch my Sunday videos. I have a feeling I'm going to have a lot more people watching my Monday videos. So let me know what you think. And if you think that Monday is an okay day for it, or if you preferred it on Sunday, just write in to me, let me know. You can always reach me at morgan at domainvestors.tv. So what's this episode about? Well, first off, I just got back from Mexico. And if you haven't read my post yet, make sure you do. I was very inspired um, by the economic climate in Mexico and I think the potential uh, for the .mx uh, TLD, and so make sure to read that. And now that I'm back, I have been uh, this weekend actually taking a look at some new domain acquisitions, as well as looking at some offers I'm getting on some of the domains that I'm selling. And I've got some insight on some mistakes that people make when they're selling their domains. Um, and I have a really great example here, and I'm not going to name names, I'm just going to leave this completely ambiguous, but um, there was a domain name that I was interested in, and I made an offer on it. And when I looked at similar domains on uh, DN Journal, their uh, year-to-date sales list, as well as name bio, I found that names um, very, very similar to this, almost the exact same names, were selling for between $150 to $300. And uh, so I made an offer on the domain for about $100, and uh, the seller came back and said they would only accept uh, $18,000 $500 because they had received higher offers than that. And I think this is a very common mistake that happens in the domaining world. When you're new to domaining, what ends up happening is you either hand register a domain or you buy a domain for a few hundred dollars and you think, yes, this domain is worth tens of thousands of dollars. Who would not pay that for this domain? But then you notice that as you get offers in, the offers are much lower. Well, this is the way that the world works and you really have to learn how to come up with accurate pricing for your domain names. Now, a lot of bloggers have written about this. Um, I think one of the best was uh, a post that uh, Sahar had done on his blog on conceptualist.com about uh, accurate pricing for domain names. And I think it's really important for domainers to understand, especially new domainers, really how to determine what value a domain should sell for. Because what ends up happening is many people own a large portfolio of domains, and I get a lot of emails from people that want to sell their domains since I offer a brokerage service. And when I look at the prices, those domain names that are literally worth uh, reg fee or less, you know, some of these are worth one or two dollars that people think are going to sell for four thousand, eight thousand. I have people send me their entire portfolios, and there's not a single domain in the portfolio that they have listed for under five thousand dollars. What I think this comes from is the idea that, well, if you own a domain name, well, once you have it for a year or two, it must be valuable. You bought it two years ago, oh, it's going to be worth tens of thousands of dollars. And what it doesn't take into account is, first off, really what makes a domain name valuable? Uh, and second, how does it compare to other domains that have sold? Because domaining and domain names fall within a market, which means that there are ups and downs in the market, just like the stock market. You know, right now and over the past few months has been a great time to buy stocks in the stock market because the price has been relatively low. But there are times when the market's been very high. And as you know, the, the best way to be able to invest in anything is buy low, sell high. Uh, but with domaining, I think a lot of people think that well, when they're registering, they're buying low. And that's not always true, because if you can hand register a .com, there is an extraordinarily good chance that that .com is not even worth the price that you paid to register it. And I think that's a really fundamental misunderstanding that people have. This is because many people register what they think are very brandable names. They register something like 111miamihotels.com and think, well, boy, this has Miami Hotels in it. And 111, that's an easy string of letters to remember. Somebody's going to want to brand their business around it. Somebody might, but it's very doubtful that anyone's going to pay more than $10 or even $5 for a domain name like that. So how do you determine uh, at least a baseline price that you should be looking for when selling a domain? Well, first off, the number one place that I look, and this is a site that all domainers should be reading on a daily basis, is dnjournal.com. This is run by Ron Jackson, a legend in the domaining world. And if you go here, he actually has a sales list. And what you can see is month by month, all the domains that have sold. 
And one of the easiest things that you can do, and this is what real estate investors do, when real estate investors look to sell a piece of real estate, what they do is they look at something called comps. If you've watched those house flipping shows, you've inevitably seen this. This is where they actually look up comparable houses and what of those houses sold for so they can figure out what the house they're trying to sell is going to sell for. It's amazing how many new domainers miss this and just think, well, I'm not going to sell this for less than $5,000 or $10,000 or $18,500, wherever that number came from. And what you really have to do is look at what have similar domain names sold for. And so if you look at the DN Journal list, you'll see. So if you own the domain playsoccer.net and you notice that playsoccer.com sold for $20,000, well, now you can say, okay, well, what has another domain that's been in .com and its comparable .net sold for? And look at what the percentage difference is in the price between a .com and .net. Look at, okay, well, if play soccer dot, or actually something more like play basketball .net or play baseball .net has sold, well, how much have those sold for? Look for similar domains. It's just like selling a house. Look for comparables. That's a great way to understand what kind of offers and what type of value your domain might have. Another place to look is NameBio. NameBio is great because you can actually enter in keywords and see what domains with those keywords have sold for. So if your domain has the word shoes in it, look at what other domain names with the word shoes have sold for and use that as your comparable. But what you want to do is, before you sell your domain, find five other domain names similar to yours and look at the price that they have sold in and that will help you understand the price range and the buyer's expectation for your domain. Because remember, it is true that the buyer will always try to show you the lowest possible price they would pay. So your domain may be worth 500 but the first offer the buyer puts out there is 50 bucks. Well, if you know that your domain is really worth $500, you can show the buyer that value and say, hey look, here's five domains similar to mine that have sold for 600 or 700 and maybe you can get the buyer back up because you're actually showing them comparative value. Otherwise, if you're just throwing a number out there and saying, oh, this is worth $18,500 because it's a, it's a cool brand name. I think this is something that people are going to want to buy and even though other domains have sold for three or 400, mine is worth 18,500 because I just love the name. That's not going to work. The other thing that you want to look at with domain value is if there's any existing revenue or visitors coming to the domain. Maybe you do have a domain like 111 Miami Hotels or 1234 hotelmaps.com or something like that that would be pretty much useless on its own, but it gets 10,000 visitors a month. It gets $20, $50 in revenue a month. Well, then you'll, what you'll want to do is look at selling the domain for a multiple of its revenue. And that's how a lot of people will buy these. They'll say, I'm willing to buy a domain at 20x revenue, which means I'm willing to buy this domain for 20 times what it makes per month. And that's the way that if you do have a domain that it looks like, hey, you look at the year-to-date sales list and there's nothing like it, or, the, or any domain similar to it have sold for, for very little uh, or a lot, a lot less than you're expecting. You look on name buy and you see, wow, all the domains similar to mine have sold for 20 or 30 bucks, but my domain makes 20 or 30 bucks a month. Well, there's value there in those visitors and that revenue. And you can definitely sell it as a multiple of the revenue. And so you can look for buyers and say, well, here's how much it makes a month. But be prepared to show them stats on how many visitors it gets, as well as stats on uh, the type of revenue it receives. So you're going to want to have that information handy. Make sure you're using a tool like Google Analytics so you can show somebody where the traffic is coming from. So they know that you aren't paying for that traffic. That's coming from either organic searches or somewhere else, some reliable source, so they know that they don't have to pay 20 bucks a month to make 20 bucks a month. And that's what you have to do. You have to treat it like any other investment. And when you're trying to sell a domain, look for what similar domain names have sold for. And that way, you'll be able to give your buyer a good price expectation as well as actually sell your domain name. Otherwise, you'll be sitting in that portfolio for a long time wondering, why is nobody buying my domains? They're all worth tens of thousands of dollars. There's a good chance they're not worth that. But if you can sell them for a reasonable price and sell them for a similar price that other domains have sold for, then you actually are running a domaining business, you're making money, you're generating income, and you can use that income to buy some really valuable domains that will be worth tens of thousands of dollars in the future. So that's it from me, Morgan Linton, here at DomainVestors.tv. I hope everybody enjoys this video now on Monday. 
and have a great week.